Greetings, true believers. I'm Stan Lee, co-author of How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, and creator of Spider-Man, The Incredible Hulk, and a whole caboodle of other comic book characters that my legendary modesty prevents me from mentioning. Now, I'll be your host and guide as we journey together along the rambunctious road to comic book artistry, which is to say it looks like we're stuck with each other for the next little while. Now then, let's start with the basics. And what can be more basic than having an artist teach us how to draw? Certainly better than a plumber. And what artist can be better suited to this titanic task than my co-author and good buddy, none other than John Buscema? Thanks, Dad. Now let's draw comics. The Marvel way. The first thing you'll need is a drawing service. It can be a table like this one, or even a flat board you can place on your lap. So, next you'll need some drawing paper. Marvel artists use two ply Bristol board, large enough to accommodate artwork 10 by 15 inches. You'll also need push pins to keep your paper from slipping off the board. Thumbtacks work, so will ten. Of course, you'll need a pencil. You didn't think it would be so complicated, did you? Now, some artists prefer a soft lead pencil, like the one John is using. Others, of a more delicate bent, select a finer hard lead, like this one here. There are many different pencil grades available. Which one you choose is up to you, of course. Most professionals use an eraser like this. It's called a kneaded eraser. But since Marvelites hardly ever make mistakes, let's move on. You'll need a simple drawing pen with a thin point for inking and bordering. A brush is a must. Your best bet is a sable hair, number three. You'll also need a bottle of black India ink, of course. Any good brand will do. These brushes are very expensive, and if you don't know how to clean them, you can ruin them. So what you do is swirl it around the water, rub it up against the glass jar, and gently rub it alongside the rag here. You come to a fine point. And let's not forget a supply of white opaquing paint to cover those rare mistakes we make from time to time. That's better. Your T-square is an invaluable tool for drawing borders and for keeping lines parallel. A triangle, too, is a necessity for drawing right angles and working in perspective. And don't forget an ink compass for drawing perfect circles. Plus, you might as well get a pencil compass, too. Any or all of these tools of the trade are available at your favorite art supply store. Now, just to make sure we're using the same language when we refer to things, Let's review the various names for many of the elements that make up a typical comic book page. The first page of a story with a large introductory illustration is called the splash page. Letters drawn in outline with space for color to be added are called open letters. Copy which relates to a title is called a blurb. The name of the story is naturally called the title. An outline around the lettering done in this jagged shape is called a splash balloon. A single illustration on a page is called a panel. The space between panels is called the gutter. And I'm sure you won't be surprised to learn that the zat is called a sound effect. Copy which represents what a character is thinking is, logically enough, a thought balloon. The little connecting circles on the thought balloons are called bubbles. I mean, we'd feel silly calling them squares. The regular speech indicators are the all-important dialogue balloons. The connecting arrows on the dialogue balloon showing who is speaking are called pointers. The words in the balloons which are lettered heavier than the other words are referred to as bold words or bold lettering. And this is my favorite part, where the names are. We call it the credits, just like in the movies. All this technical stuff, which nobody ever reads, showing who publishes the mag and when and where, usually found on the bottom of the first page, is the indicia. Now, don't blame me. I didn't make up that word. 
copy in which someone is talking to the reader, but which is not within dialogue balloons, is called a caption. Don't worry if you're not remembering everything this time. One of the marvelous things about video cassettes is that you can go back later and watch it again. Put it on hold while you make all the notes you want to. Oh, and by the way, don't get impatient. We'll get to the drawing part when you least expect it. Moving right along now, we introduce you to an excellent example of one of Marvel's many widely heralded close-ups, so-called because the reader's eye has moved in about as close as possible. Now, this type of panel, in which the reader's view of the scene is from farther away, enabling the figure to be seen from head to toe, is called a medium shot. And here you have a long shot. In fact, since it shows such an extreme wide angle scene, you might even call it a panoramic long shot without getting anyone angry at you. When you're up above the scene looking down at it, as in this panel, what else could you possibly call it but a bird's eye view? Now on the other hand, when you're below the scene of the action, where your eye level is somewhere near Spidey's heel, as in this panel, we're inclined to refer to it as a worm's eye view. A drawing in which the details are obscured by solid black or any other single tone or color is called a silhouette. And now that we agree upon the tools and the language, let's get on to the heavy stuff. Let's start drawing. <laughs> 